Yeah.
Oh, really? This is a regular council meeting, September the 19th, 2013. If you would please stand and join me with, in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed no. All members voting for the motion. Uh, currently now it's uh, our 10 minute public input period and uh, we have two individuals signed up to speak. Uh, T.J. Cochran. Good evening Mayor, Council, Mr. Wood, the same. How's it going? Uh, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, stage for the city of Canton. That's an asset that I've had the privilege of working with the city for the past three years, helping operate the sound system and coordinating that in many different capacities. Uh, those capacities include the usual first Friday of every month, the um, Canton Festival of the Arts, as well as this year I had the opportunity to work with the police department with National Night Out and we utilize the stage and the equipment for that as well right here in Brown Park. And I just wanted to talk about how having that asset in conjunction with other assets like the Canton Theater, 
the um, amphitheater that's going to be built at Etowah Park. All of those things work really well together to build the community and make it bigger and greater. Having that asset is a great point for the city and it's definitely something that I think we should hang on to and continue to utilize. I don't think it should be considered competition with any other venue. That would be like saying we only need one restaurant in downtown Canton or we only need one, you know, the art center versus the Canton Theater. We only need one. We don't need them both. They all serve a different purpose and they all have a different utilization that makes them a great benefit to the city and to our ability to spread ourselves, spread ourselves out throughout the city and do different events for different venues. And so I just wanted to really encourage you guys to think about the utilization of that stage and that equipment and thank you for the opportunity to use it for the past three years and the different events that I've had the opportunity to use it with. Um, that being said, I am one of the few people who knows how to run the sound equipment for the city. And so if there's any ever questions or comments or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, it's something, sound is something that I've done since college and it's something that I'm more than happy to help you guys with uh, if you ever have questions or concerns about that. I know the sound equipment we actually own today uh, the sound equipment stage were paid for in 2004 by impact fees and so it's, it's all paid for and that equipment that we have was designed specifically for that stage it would not work in another capacity so if you try to take that exact equipment and use it at the amphitheater it would not work it would not satisfy the needs of that amphitheater and so it's definitely something that's designed specifically for that and I think it's a great asset for the city and I really hope you consider hanging on to that and utilizing it to continue to make this a great community from a uh, event standpoint. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Will McGruder. First of all, I'd like to commend you and especially the Joby West and his staff, the magnificent sidewalk we have on East Marietta Street, didn't take years. Like, you know, some of these projects had not been finished. None of you were on the council when they started. <laughs> didn't get into all the DOT, got the job done. Thank you. It's excellent. My other comments, uh, as a member of Canton Tourism, I feel like I need to speak about the proposed stage, portable stage policy. The idea of eliminating the portable stages is asinine as the spending of the $200,000 plus for the amphitheater. You've done it. I hope it's successful. You all profess the wanting to help downtown to prosper, even considering doing away with such a large portion of the success of such events as First Friday, Farmer's Market, Taste of Canton, and you just mentioned another one, Fields of Faith. Uh, that's just unbelievable that you want to try to do such damage. It's your, is, it, is it your idea to justify the cost of the amphitheater by having these events move there? In most cases, that wouldn't even, it'd be, it'd be totally impractical if it's not just totally impossible. Needless to say, that would destroy all the good hard work that's been done to help downtown reach the success it's having now. After reading the policy, I'm waiting to hear one positive reason for doing away with this asset that already belongs to us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And uh, I will, I'm going to read the items that are on the consent agenda if anyone wishes to pull an item off for uh, further discussion, uh, just, just let me know. Uh, item A, action on CMEC contract for improvements at Ridge Road and Marietta Highway. Uh, this is the intersection improvement there at Ridge Road. Uh, item B, action on authorization to sign GFA loan documents loan approved on July the 11th, 2000. 13. C. Action on Georgia Power Relocation of Utilities on Main Street. We've talked about that. Uh, action on Surplus Radio Equipment Agreement. 
uh, E action on the FY 2014 budget amendment. This is regarding the fire department. Uh, and action at, uh, item F action on planning commission recommendation for case CUP 1307 001. Uh, Americo Real Estate Company, this is for U Haul at 2175 <coughs> Marietta Highway. And uh, that's, that's all the items. Are there any of those items that you would like to move for further discussion? Okay. <coughs> We have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, any other discussion? If not, those in favor, second five are saying aye. Opposed, no. All members voted with the motion. <coughs> Under old business, the action on the revised street policy, Councilman Cummins. Yeah, the way that the original uh, instructions that we set up to the building department read uh, created a situation where we needed to clarify it and that situation is where we have an existing accepted dedicated and finished street that the only way access to it is via other streets that are not finished or accepted but since we've already accepted the street it would be discriminatory in my opinion to restrict the building on a street that's already belongs to us because that parcel may have nothing to do with the streets that are surrounding that particular parcel so under mr. Dyer's advice We've asked to clarify that and say if a building lot is located on a finished, dedicated, and accepted street, the restricted uh, the restriction on issuing building permits does not apply. And I bring that to council's a motion to modify it with that clarification. Okay. We have a motion to clarify the street policy. I have a second. Any other questions or discussion? If not, those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voted for the motion. <coughs> uh, discussion of the Park uh, Athletic Association Manual. Uh, Mr. Bakersfield. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think the council has had uh, what we call it, ample time to go through this uh, policy and procedure manual. I did hear Mr. Cummings refer to the fact that it was referenced as youth uh, quite a bit, but there, I don't see any problem where if some adult or older has to follow, they'd be following the same policy. I don't think we need to uh, make that unless you want to have that as a change in here to say slash youth and adult. But basically, I have heard. I have not heard from anybody in reference back to this, so I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and approve uh, this policy procedure. So we can have a second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Smart, a couple of, I just have a few questions. Uh, the, I was reading through and I don't know that it was addressed in here uh, where we have this potential that we would have an athletic association that we've sanctioned and they run a statewide tournament uh, would this allow any other association to play against the sponsoring one which we've sanctioned or do we have to qualify every one of those other associations? In other words, that's, that's a good, that is a good question. Because it could be conceivable that we get into state or regional soccer competition. I came from a city that did have that, and you had associations all over the state competing against your local. We had similar policy manual is this and I think it's very good but I, I'm, 
I, I couldn't find whether we were trying to control whether or not those other associations had to live up to the same standards we had here for ours, or we would, how would we control that in terms of those other associations? For example, if another association came from, I don't care, Athens, Georgia to play in a soccer tournament, how do we know what that association has done in terms of liability insurance, et cetera, et cetera. When they bring forward that schedule to the management group of this parks and recreation, they've got to get scheduled on there. If they do not have a schedule that have not come forward, then they aren't going to get on. But if they bring the documents that are required in this manual, it says that they qualify nonprofit, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, then that group would say, okay, they qualify. So if I understand correctly, then we're going to qualify every possibly every association in the state. No, sir. They're the, just the, the ones that, that come forward and ask for playtime. Okay, so that would be the managing group. It's the management group. We would, we would, we would look to the association who has requested the tournament. And as long as they met the requirements, we wouldn't be concerned about the other associations that they were playing against if they were from Athens or from Dalton or anything met those requirements. Yeah, that's, uh, we got to separate the requirements. The, the requirements for priorities in the resolution, not in this manual. And so that the, the priority would be given to the local athletic association who wants to have a tournament. The fact that they may be people from out of town would affect their priority. Within the manual, we say you got to bring in some insurance. So the association will have liability insurance. And how they deal with the people who come to their tournaments really up to them. As long as it's just the sponsor of the tournament that we're controlling. We're not attempting to control those that may participate <coughs> in a tournament from another area. Is yeah. that what you're saying? We, we, we're going we're gonna to allow an athletic association. It may not be a local one because out of town, are allowed if they meet the priority. They can come use our field. But once whoever signs up, we will get a liability insurance policy from them. So what you're saying is, is if we have a local soccer association and they meet all of our requirements and they schedule fields for a tournament here, each individual association coming to play in that tournament has to go through the process no, but, <coughs> no, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of requirements in here. Well, there's a manual. We have a manual that says <coughs> these, this is the priorities, the, and, and one of them is you got to be incorporated. I'm priorities so much as I'm talking about the requirements of the association having a million dollar policy, be registered with the state, all of these other requirements. If they're not within our jurisdiction, how are we going to control it? We wouldn't. Because we're just, I mean, the way I look at it is we would, we would have somebody on the hook and responsible for conducting the tournament. That's correct. Okay. So, okay, that yeah. answers the question. It's only the sponsoring one that we're I, I wish you had brought that forward to me. I could have gone in depth in that prior oh, to I sitting see. here trying to but that's the clear process, it up for you right now. That, that's the process of doing here, not having that's what? off site meetings and things like that. That's the process. Off site meetings? You and I could have a meeting if you wanted to. Yeah. The, the second question, question. Okay. let's go ahead and uh, the we have a motion and a second. Okay. Do you have a uh, yeah, that question? Okay. Is what plan, we have a lot of ad hoc teams of <coughs> citizens that get together and play sports. Yeah. And my question is, what plans do we have to communicate the field scheduling to everybody so that a, a group of <coughs> young men who decide they want to put a soccer game on a Sunday afternoon know that that field has been scheduled. What is, what is planned to do there? Uh, Mr. Cummings, in the second document that I passed out that you should have had ample time to review, it's called the Parks and Facility Use Permit. Permit. Again, I've got no feedback from anybody in reference to that. But that states that this group that we have not identified yet, a management group who will oversee scheduling of these parks, these fields will 
be <coughs> able to answer that question for me. It's right here. So if there's a scheduled game going on or something, then somebody's already got the use of it. If not, the field is open to anybody. But how will I, how is that communicated? Well, well, I, well that, that's, that's a novel idea. We'll use a website. Yeah, we'll put you in charge of bringing it up. Uh, thank you, thank you very right. much. We have a motion and a second on that. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. All members voted for the motion. Yes. I, I want to go back to, we've already approved this, but I want to go back to this subject. Which if the county on the on the other ballpark that's being built, has the same set of priorities. Is it going to be the county team gets first, and the, and the city teams would get next? Would be underneath the county? City, city teams is the county team. team. But okay. no. Well, in a way, the yeah. category priority usage is category one, city of Canton. Period. But is this category a, two? Excuse me, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Is this for the Baseball fields. On oh, Killian, that's not yeah. uh, for that. That's just Killian. I know that. That's what I'm just saying. Killian, you not you weren't listening to me. I said I realize this is not this field. It's the other field, but it is on county property. We don't have anything to do with it. I understand, but it was our money that built it. No, yeah, it was county money. money. No, it was. It was, it was county money, but it was allocated to us, and it was taken away from. It was taken away from. Us. Our, our citizens will be will be playing there, just like anybody else. Well, that's what just I said. Just, just as county citizens will be playing here. Well, does it say county? The city gets priority over county, I think, does it? Only we're talking about our city field on this field right here. Our field right here. Killian? No. That's the problem of having. <laughs> Well, well, it's definitely our parks and their parks. But it was a choice. You're not getting the message. It's our money. You're getting the message. Our it's our money. It's our citizens' tax we, money. It's county money as well, too. We, well, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As this council voted on the fact that we would not take the 2 point, uh, I don't know wrong with this, 2.6 million or 2.8 million. 2.8 county will have it, run it, manage it, yeah. oversee it, build it. And we gifted back the money that we never actually had in our pocket back to the county, and the county took it, and they're responsible. And they wanted us to put our name on that park or have something to do with it. And we said we will have nothing to do with it as far as that aspect of it. But John, and I understand that, and I respect that. I was, I was around, I understand. Okay. The point that I, I didn't think of at the time is the fact that those were monies that were allocated to this city that we gave away. We gave away our citizens' right to be first. No, we didn't. Excuse me. Mr. Mayor, it, may, may I respond? Correct me. I want to be wrong. Okay, well, I, I'm, I, I hope I can. Uh, it was our money if we built the fields. We chose not to build the fields and we chose to take our money and give it back to them. It wasn't our money, it's county money. Everybody in the county had the right to that money. So when we when we elected not to build those fields in Etowah Park, we said, it's not our money anymore. You can have it, you can build the fields at Killian Park, and we don't want anything to do with it. That's what this council said at that time. So at that point, we gave away that we, we it's, it's no longer our money. I understand, we, I understand we gave it away. Believe me. I understand that, but did we realize that if this is in force with the county, that it's potential that our kids in the city or adults could be adults playing on that food may not have the same priority. Mr. Baxter, along with that gift that was returned back to point eight million, we also have the option of buying. The Killian Park land, which was owned by the county, for two million dollars. So we didn't have two million dollars to expense 
to buy the property to keep it in the camp name to keep the camp in control on it. So we backed off. So what we did now, most all the ball diamonds are Dizzy Dean and the others. They're all already set up and they'll be over there playing. And our Canton kids will be in those teams playing over there. I think. So I don't think we have a baseball or softball team in the city that would be vying for that lot. They're all tied in with those other groups. Right. So I think one thing uh, we need to be uh, aware of is the fact that uh, Canton residents are also county residents. Mm -hmm. but county residents are not necessarily city residents. So our regulations, whatever we have here, is not necessarily going to be applied to the county because I don't know how they could. If they said you got to live in the county, well, we live in the county. I don't think they're going to apply it to a to the incorporated versus unincorporated area. Anything else? Uh, we have. We can. Well, then we have to uh, agree upon the resolution for the city of Kent to establish an athletic field use policy the other document y'all have in your hands right and i'd like to make that motion okay. we, got we already voted on the policy and procedures second motion uh policy intrinsic manual now we've got the uh field use policy is that not on the agenda is that on the agenda yeah, it's two part Finally, it was, I got a problem with that. Yeah, it, was, it was the same as I presented two weeks ago. Yeah, I realized that, but uh, I didn't know. The second part must got left off. But you made a motion, and uh, state that again, if you would, please. A resolution for the city of Kent to establish an athletic field use policy. Do we have a second? I have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion or questions here? Do you have questions? No. Oh. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members vote the motion. Thank you. All right, item C uh, discussion and possible action on award of contract for assembly room renovations. What this what most of you know what this is is actually the, the sanctuary, uh, future uh, council chambers, courtroom. Uh, uh, you also know that there's been some there's been some serious physical problems there. We got a roof fixed on it over the city hall, but uh, there's some uh, asbestos problems in there, uh, and and quite honestly, uh, it needs to be uh, it needs to be upgraded and and, and uh, fixed up. Uh, we also have uh, uh, this. This is to be paid for with with sales tax monies, if if approved, uh, that were allocated for buildings and so forth. So uh, it's not like we could buy, just build anything with that money, I guess, or or, or renovate or repair or whatever. But uh, anyway, uh, this is the that's what it is. And you had a uh, bid amount. I forgot what the low bid was. 758 that's the, the, the complete turnkey job of it so uh, does anybody have any uh, comments we have a motion uh, regarding the uh, assembly room renovations I just have one question yes sir it is if the low bid was 780 whatever uh, is there adequate monies to pay for the renovation uh, my understanding is that is correct. Uh, if, if there is, then I'll make a motion we approve. Is it, uh, what was your money? Do we have the money paid for the renovation? Oh. Should we ask? We, no, we do. Already. Oh, he, he, he has confirmed that. That's right. correct. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I have yeah. a question. Right. Any other discussion? Yes, yes. Just right. uh, the previous meeting where we were discussing this, we also asked um, Mr. Rogelard to go back and seek a revised or negotiated what was the official term they call it value something value engineer. value engineer thank you and he did so and we we got this back at three at 391 which deleted a list of items that 
we should have. And 391 versus 758, and I, I know we have the money, but we also have a few more years to go that we might need that extra money. So my question is, do we want to do the 758, or as we ask and instruct you, Mr. Rogelar, to go back and get a value-added um, quote, which is 391. Okay. The second question I would have then is the money that we currently have to pay for the 780000 uh, is that a fixed amount that's not going to increase over the next few years, or will it more money come in from the sales tax? Well, hopefully more money will come in from the sales tax. Okay, so, so then, if, as, as Mr. Huffman is saying, if we use this money, we're not depleting all the monies we have, we'll be getting more money in anyway. Right, right. I, I think that's correct. How, How much money do we have allocated on the Splash 6 that we can spend on public buildings? Uh, again, a lot of these questions, it would be very helpful if people would ask them before we get up here, because well, we don't commit all this to memory, but as I recall, it's 2.3 million plus or minus, like 2.3 million. Yes, sir. 2.3 million. Okay. Right. I thought it was. 2.3 million. million. So, but some of that's already been extended. If you have to what the balance would be, I can't keep your So, mind. with that, and we spent 758 and we've already spent some, we're already halfway through what we are, are going to be allocated on this slot six. I, I, th I think uh, Mr. Rush made a good point there regarding the, uh, you know, we're going to be getting some more. And, and you know, we didn't budget anything for that uh, discount mall down at, uh, toward Woodstock there. And, and I think that's going to be a real, I think you're going to know the difference when, uh, when that starts coming in in another month or two. I think it's going to be a difference. So we're, we're, we're going to get more than what we what we have anticipated or projected. I think slide general. six only calls for two point three million dollars to be spent there, whether we get more or not. Well, if we get more, we have more to spend. Then. That that that's just what based on what was anticipated. Yeah. So now we got to go to the general fund. No, no. no. If we spend the $2.3 million. If the money comes in under SPLA 6, and, and we, I'm just going to pick a number. Let's say we've got $15 million in SPLA 6 that's allocated among various operations. If we connect, collect $18 million, then we can proportionally allocate the, that $3 million among those other people. Is it not capped at 17? I don't think so. I think so. Might be. Yeah. Might be. I think so. When we cap. When you get to 17 million, that's it. Who gets the rest of the money? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah. I want to go back to the money. Uh, and the question, the question that I have is, is if I look at our budget, we projected in fiscal 2013 to come in with from SPLA six with two million seven hundred thousand, and we were only spent. Uh, 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 Carrying forward into 2014, 507,000, and spending a total of 3.2 million that we budgeted on other things. Are we saying that we have 758,000 above and beyond this 3.2 million that we budgeted for 2014? That we've got excess in the account of 758,000 dollars above? and beyond what's budgeted in 2014? No, I don't have a spreadsheet in front of me. I think, Nathan, have you got that? Yes, sir. You got your spreadsheet? Just have to have Good point you make tonight. Yes, sir. Jack, we were talking about it. With flaws, timing is up to you. Do we have 750000 in all honesty? It will be close. You know, assuming we spend all the budgeted amount and the $750,000 project, it is close. I think the mayor brings up a good point. We do expect the average collections have been going up as the economy improves. So uh, I have put together somewhat of a worst case scenario and uh, certainly hope it, 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 well, it will be close. Let me rephrase my question. If we didn't do this, and the, forgetting the timing for a minute, if we spend the three million two hundred thousand that we have budgeted, and that's exactly what we spent, we would have a surplus in the 
of cash at the end of 2014 of 758,000. That's that my projection, yes, sir. There. Okay. Yes. So that's just about, it. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Benjamin. Thank you. I I think we're all getting kind of tangled up in the uh, issues of splash and everything else and the monies. We have a problem down there. We have asbestos falling out of that ceiling. We have courts being held down there. We have citizens being exposed. So we're sitting here wringing our hands over do we have that? We got it, let's vote on it, and let's get that problem solved before we have a crisis on our hands. Thank you. I, I think that's a good point. And that, you know, it's not just the council chambers, it's not just for the council. And the, the court uses that by, by far more than we would ever use it, you know, the council would. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Barrister, under this 391, this asbestos comes out. So that, that liability is gone. So forget for, that argument is just not apropos. The, the, the deleted items that, are, that were negotiated were like uh, wheelchair lift, owner's contingency, plaster repair, pew refinishing. I just didn't keep the pews like they are. You know, so it's it's not like it. We could add a few of those back in if we wanted to. But the, the, the idea that we're putting people in danger, the 391 takes care of that. Good. Yeah. You, you got one other question? I have one other question. Okay. Make it short. We have a well, it is short. I okay. sort of lost the floor back there when I had to finish my question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The 195000 for the audiovisual was basically two questions. One, we questioned the extent of that. Uh, Camille, when I talked to her, thought that adequate audiovisual could be done for probably sixty or $70,000. That was number one. The second question I have on that audio visual, is that something that can be done separate from the rest of the contract or must it be done at the same time? Possibly, I would joke you something. I would expect that in anything that we've ever funded, there's always been value engineering as the project proceeds. So if, if it looks as though the sound system could be done for adequately for less as it's progressed i'm sure that starting to do a change we're doing that too and i think we've been too many of those assumptions and end up paying more okay we, we got a, uh, yeah. we've had a motion and a second let's go ahead uh, no where do we both know mr mayor uh the seven nine seven yeah, yeah that was the motion i laid the, the seven right. 58 4 14. yes okay uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. All members voted for the motion with the exception of Mr. Hutton. Okay. Okay. Try. Okay. You tried. You tried. Item D, a discussion of the stage rental policy. Councilman Rush. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before I get into this one, I'd like to remind everybody that the last meeting we brought forth the stage rental policy that said we would rent the stage and everybody would have to pay for it including component units uh, that didn't seem to want to fly now we're coming back and saying let's keep the stage until we get the amphitheater and get rid of the stage and uh, we're hearing people that don't like that either but the problem here is that as I see it if we try to rate the, the stage is a declining asset it's it's in, in process it needs repair and we don't have we haven't budgeted for it now what we do in, in, if you want budgetary control everybody that uses it should pay for it yes the component unit would be paying for it ourselves but it would be in their budget because right now the only budget that gets hit with the stage is mr ken jemmy's budget he doesn't know who's going to use the stage when they're going to use it how often they're going to use it when he's preparing his budget he has to deliver the stage and take back the stage and set the stage up on overtime and any repairs has to come out of his budget now we know that mr. Kanjemi this year forego for 
forgave a, a, a large piece of equipment so he could get another person. Now, if we keep, you know, if we keep the stage it, and we were told it needs some major repairs, we don't have the money. We don't have the money budgeted for it. I personally, it, it, it is an asset. I guess people say it's an asset, but I don't think the city should be in the entertainment business. Uh, but we are. So we're looking at it this way now. It, we, we could possibly have something in between, but we need somebody to say, yeah, we're willing to pay for it. We're willing, we, need, we need to build a fund to repair this thing. We don't do that right now. We just take it out of general funds as needed, and Mr. Kanjemi's budget gets hit by it. So that's one of the reasons why this, this uh, policy was agreed by the committee when we met with Mr. Kanjemi last week. Yeah, open for discussion. Mr. Warner, the, the urgency to do anything on this policy is zilch because it carries it through until the amphitheater is finished. So whatever we decide tonight doesn't make any difference if, if there's nothing that goes into effect for multiple months. So I'm suggesting that we just set aside the, the entire oh, discussion on this item. It's not, he, he's, he's, he's not correct. Yeah, uh, because the, the stage is available for the use by the city of Kent and its component units. And that's all? That's all. Nobody else. No rentals to anybody. Well, now, the other problem, too, is, is hauling this stage back and forth. We're not really equipped adequately to haul the stage back and forth. So there's a problem there for, for our people hauling it. Okay. Good. Uh, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say what started this process was was I came to city council and said, in effect, we get different requests from different equally legitimate but different entities asking to waive the rental fee for the stage, forego the rental fee for the stage. And we found ourselves, so staff, in, in, in needing to make decisions about who got free use of the stage and who didn't. And so we came to council and said, would you please give us a policy direction on when or if we can allow use of the stage on a gratis basis. That's really the only question that we ever asked, and I'm not sure if we're getting that direction, at least in a clear fashion, <coughs> at this point. And so, regardless of what we do with this policy tonight, we still need that clarity. Because tomorrow morning, somebody can call and say, I'd like to use the stage, and we need to know what to tell them. Jack, uh, Jack, okay. you have comment. Yeah, um, well, I know we, we talked about, I brought it up last night about bills of faith going to want to use this stage because we've given it to them each time they've had it. And I know there was some statements made that, well, if I said it's going to be, we're waiting until the last hour, and then we're saying, hey, you can't have this. And it's not really, you know, it's going to be a hardship on them. And most everybody said, well, you know, that won't go into effect that quick. We can let them have it. But, uh, you know, I have mixed emotions on this. I really do. I think, you know, yes, we need, you know, we need to keep the stage up, and it is a part of the city. We do have functions that use it. Our Main Street certainly uses it a lot, and uh, you know, other people. We have really only read that out, I think, four or five times. But I see Mr. Kajimi's point too, because it does come out of his budget. It is not safe to haul it back and forth, and it is declining, and we've got to build that up. So. How do you balance all that? I really don't know. We, we talked about it at, at the meeting, but uh, it's it's something that needs some thought. We you know we kind of set up a policy here that could, could last till till that amphitheater is built. Maybe we could change the policy then. You know whatever. But we certainly need to do something to be able to have our events here in the city and use the stage if we need it and certainly use the amphitheater out there with a lot of them uh, as well. Because that, that's going to be a great venue as well. Oh, Pretty much right. that, well, it's kind of ironic. We just spent $758,000. Could have saved a few thousand if we'd gone with the 390, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got a few mixed emotions too. And it goes back to when, uh, in my past career, and we did some things that we did very well. And all of a sudden, we quit. And I'd start thinking about it. 
my hand, we quit doing that. It was something that was really working. Well, because, and there would be some semi-logical reason, and rather than try to solve the problem, we just quit. Now here we got citizens coming in here, and we all know that stage is being used probably as good as any asset this city's got. Now, can we start charging a little bit to offset some of the costs? We don't have to offset the whole cost. If our citizens are using it that much, then we just need to make a budget adjustment. So let's charge some for it. Let's keep it working. Uh, Mr. Cummins right. We don't have to make that decision right now. But just because we got a little bit of a problem, just to cut it off, no way. It's too good, too good of an asset. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The committee was headed up. You chaired the committee. And who was on your committee? Mr. Bryan, Mr. Good. Okay. And what we was asked, you all went back and did, and you bring it forward again, and now we're dialoguing on some things that kind of spin away from what you all were asked to go back and look at. Now, I, as Mr. Cummings pointed out, it's not a crisis. Uh, can we have the committee try to take back some of this additional input? If, oh. if I may, Mr. Mayor, I have a response. Sure. I think what we're going back to is what the first proposal we brought forth, yes. that everybody that uses it pays for it. Now, if, if any of the component units want to use it, they can budget how many times they want to use it. And if, it, if the cost is going to be how, $500, I'm just picking a number, if it's $500 to use it, they can put that in their budget. Then we know, and then we can build up a capital fund to keep the, the thing repaired. Mr. Kanjemi will know how many times it's going to be needed in advance, and everything will be have budgetary controls. But right now, it's kind of, the way I see it, it's kind of willy-nilly. And uh, if we don't want to rent it outside the city, that's fine. But we need to set up some budgetary controls so that we know what we're doing and how we can fund this and pay for it. I remember when I was taking some classes in political science a couple of years ago at, at Kennesaw State, the instructor gave us a case study of a city that was in some dire distress and said, fix it. So all these little groups sat together, come up, and the only thing the instructor said at the end is, how are you going to pay for it? And that was the big thing, how are you going to pay for it? And that's why said, we're saying here, how are you going to pay for it? Anyone else? I, you know, I'm sort of, I'm sort of the of opinion, sort of a hybrid between those. Uh, number one, I, I'm not really, and I said this in the work session, I guess, I'm not really sure the the um, the city ought to be renting out city equipment. I just, I just kind of got, I mean, what's the difference between that and a dump truck or a street sweeper or a chipper? I mean, I, I don't see really the difference between that being a city piece of equipment, uh, and I'm just not sure we ought to rent it out. I think my feeling is that we ought to allow the the uh, component units of the city, the DDA, Main Street, and and those agencies that we help fund, actually, that the city helps fund, which would be like the library and uh, something like that even, if they wanted to do that. Uh, but and I think that we should allow them to utilize it since what they're doing is generally on behalf of the city and helping our city. I mean, it, it's an event for the city. Um, I mean, I think I, uh, Ms. Rush makes a good point about budgeting, but I think you know, with budgeting, I think we can do that kind of like we do the most everything else is we kind of look at how many times it's been leased or rented out in the past and kind of project maybe a little increase and and. Uh, build that in to the to the budget but I, I just don't uh, I just don't see that uh, that charging uh, just taking one pocket put the other when you charge a, a, a city unit like that today. but yes go ahead. Uh, I have to agree with some of the points you made Mr. Mayor but not all of them you know, you know that <laughs> there's certain items that you can go out on the open market and rent drugs can go rent a truck. We're going to have a new new place soon. And there's certain items you just can't go out and rent every day. And we have to be fortunate enough to have, we'll be able to provide our citizens and their organizations something to rent to help pay for it. 
I agree with you saying charging our own agencies or departments to use it is taking one and putting the other pocket. I, don't, I would agree with that. But at the same time, if they're good organizations, uh, we'll have to draw the line somewhere. And I know this council has a hard time making hard decisions, but we'll just have to draw the line somewhere and say, we can rent to these people at this price and over here, if it's a city function, there's no charge. But there's a difference between renting a truck and renting a, a stage. And I, I think there's a big difference. And we probably have fees for things that we do as a service which is almost like rent, you know. You, so I don't, I don't see there's a problem. I, I agree we need to come up with a hybrid type of thing. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Scott, that I'll get you. I, I sort of agree that we shouldn't be in the realm business, but I think it should be available to any organization whereby the use of that stage gives the city a direct benefit. If there's no direct benefit by its usage, I do not think we should be, I think that's where we draw the line. So if there was another organization and maybe we have a minimal rental amount that we charge to cover the cost of it, its usage, but it should directly benefit the city, we know for example, that if an organization wanted us to haul it to Woodstock, for example, that put on a benefit down there, <coughs> there is very little, if any, direct benefit to the city of Canton in that. So that's where I would draw that line. Is I asked Mr. Cummins a question on that, because you always ask to quantify, you're your numbers guy. Um, how do we quantify that direct benefit? I'm not opposed to that. Well, I would think anything that draws people to an event in or about or in or near the center of city or in the city will directly benefit the restaurants and around there. So maybe it's a geographical area which you define its usage. So and I would relate its cost more to the distance and the time that if you're going to charge a cost, to the distance and the time that you have to expend in order to get that stage there or back. But, I mean, you could set a fixed average amount for that. So would you would you say that any organization that wanted to do that and bring a crowd downtown would be able to use it? I got a problem with that. <laughs> well, the problem is, is if you, you either got to do none or all. That's the problem. That is the problem. None or all. And the first one we said all, and then the council said no, and now we say none, and the council says no. Well, I mean, you know, like, well, I'm trying like to say, make it all within a defined. There should a defined a defined limitation. There should be no previous. The, the the problem is is you have to have a a rule that whatever rule you use has to be non-discriminatory. So <clears throat> if you rent it to one organization, you've got to basically make it available to all organizations. But you can define the rules under which an organization qualifies for its usage that are equally applied to all of those organizations, i.e. within this geographical area or whatever. That sounds like another committee, doesn't it? Is there a motion on the floor? It's not like a motion. There was no motion. That sounds like a mountain out of a molehill. I mean, I make a motion we send this back to committee. Oh, no. I would make a motion we make the the council the committee of the whole. Well, it's good and it works. Is that your design? Is that at a work session? What's it the next work session? Same, same discussion. I'm not going to be there. Second time. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. The field's a pay. Yeah, we, we had, at the, the last meeting, we had already agreed that the field's yeah, That's what I understood. That's what I understood. Yeah, that's correct. That was a definite maybe. Yeah. I, for the staff's benefit, maybe we could have a motion to allow all anybody who's already scheduled to use it 
go ahead and use it for nobody else until you come up with a policy. That's yes, good. But we, we've also, we have to also say that I think there is an understanding of what the rental charge would have been. Is that my correct, Mr. Wood? Wasn't it 750 or I don't, I thought we had, we had adopted a rental charge a long time ago that the staff had been, uh, had been available, but then, you know, they pulled around. There's a $750 fee that has been charged and to and paid for by some churches, yeah. by some uh, very, very legitimate, wholesome, not-for-profit entities. There have been some other equally wholesome not-for-profit entities for whom the fee has been waived. Okay. And, and all we ever asked for was to give us direction on who to charge the fee to and who not to charge the fee to. Well, that's, that's all that started all of this. Well, that's what we thought we did the first time around. And then everybody gets charged the fee. There are no freebies because it's a declining asset that needs repair. And, and my understanding, some of the renters uh, left it in dismal condition. So, so you want to amend your motion? Then? Well, I didn't make a motion. <laughs> but, I thought you did. <laughs> I make a motion that we uh, refer this to the, the portable stage policy discussion to the next work session, but that we also uh, establish a $750 rental fee for anybody outside of the city and the city component units, beginning now, except fields of faith, which we had already agreed on. And, and that would be waived? No. Waived, waived for them, but for, but because of a prior commitment, but from... from with, with that single exception, from this point forward, this point forward. everybody except the city and city component <laughs> Right. We have a second. Oh, well, we have a second. Okay, Mr. Bashman. Yes, again. Bring it back to the work session, but I would challenge this council to write out bullet points, not ten page epistle to the apostles, but just something simple that each of us can have within the week. Anybody wants to contribute. So when we get here. We've heard everybody's input so we can see where it matches up or not versus sitting here and whip on this old horse like we're doing right now. It's a waste of time. Bring your idea to the council. Get it to them. Put it in your emails, whatever you want to do. But have it so that when we're looking at it, we're looking at something that, that we can build off of and say it's a done deal. I'd say give it all to Susan and she can put them all together and distribute it. Yes. Yeah. We have a motion and a second on the table, I think. Now, any other discussion? If not, those in favor say five saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members vote for the motion. All right, update on Edward River Park. It's a Heritage Park walking trail. Especially. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you have in your hands the uh, highlighted Pose Trail uh, that we are waiting to get the specs on so that we can move right ahead and get bids out. So, uh, thank you. The, the idea of this post trail is it runs right parallel with the Georgia Power easement and will not uh, require a lot of uh, earth moving and tree removal in that particular area. The one is the big loop that goes down close to the river is uh, required to go through uh, heavy uh, wooded areas. Also terrain is up and down. Also we'd have to deal with the uh, Corps of Engineers and uh, a number of other governmental agencies that would delay the whole process. So this one's pretty straightforward and it's uh, the least expensive of the two proposals and that's what I would like to have Mr. Wood uh, get with uh, Mr. Shirley uh, or Joe D, whoever, get the specs set up so that we can get this on the work session in two weeks and if we have the specs where we can get it out for bid, we'll be able to move ahead. Is that a requirement of a a motion or anything else, or just to say let's do it. We need a motion to select that. I thought I thought I did that at the workshop anyway. Oh, well, probably done. Yeah. 
discussion of the Lancashire property uh, settlement. What this amounts to is very, very briefly is, is a, a piece of property that uh, uh, Mr. Blankenship and his attorney have, have come in and said that uh, uh, it is not in the city and never has been, although the city has shown it to be in the uh, in, located in the city. And yet we have no uh, information or, or no backup that shows that it was ever taken into the city as such. So we're sort of not in a good position on that, at least it appears. This amount, this is a 2.29 acre track uh, located down near the end of Keith Drive up at the Walmart, past one of those restaurants down there. Uh, pretty close, pretty close to the flood plain area. I don't know if this is or not, but it's pretty close there anyway. So. Uh, Basically, instead of going through a long, drawn-out process of de-annexation, uh, we, we had talked about the possibility of entering into a consent order, I'm assuming it's what it would be, with, with the, uh, the plaintiff there, and, and basically uh, having the judge sign off on it that uh, it is not located in the city, and that would uh, give them what they want, and certainly not going to hurt us that much either. Well, let's out of the city. Right. They were pretending they never were to begin with, but that's the same blanket ship that's down there on the old ball ground that business. Anyone have any other questions about that? Or? Yeah, motion. Yeah, the motion would be to yeah. authorize me to enter into the consent order. Yeah. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. <clears throat> All members voting for the motion. You any other than what you had already? No, the only thing I, I might uh, mention to uh, Council is that uh, you'll be getting a letter on this, as will the, uh, the members of the Downtown Development Authority, the Main Street Board, and the Board of Education, who will ask you. Uh, we will have a public meeting. Uh, as you recall, in May of this year, we commissioned a company from uh, Michigan to conduct a parking study in our downtown area. They'll have the results, preliminary results of that study, at least uh, available to us October 8th, 6 p.m. in this room. You will be getting a letter to that effect. Okay. All right. I think that's all we have on the agenda. So, if anyone, uh, motion to say those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Uh, no. All members vote for the motion.